friends, today we will study about the T-loop given by Burstall. This is a T-loop which is 10 mm wide and the vertical height is 5 mm. The width of the loop is 2 mm. So the vertical total is 7 mm and width is 10 mm. The anterior arm is called as alpha and the posterior is beta. We will study about these bends later. This is a TMA wire which is quite resilient and flexible you can see. So T loop is made in TMA wire, preferably 1725 or 1825 TMA. And this is a stainless steel wire which is quite shiny and quite rigid also. So it has a high LDR, so it's not recommended. So we are making a T loop, the ideal T loop given by Wellstone in a TMA wire using a light wire plier. First of all, give an upright band, 90 degree band in the wire. Whenever we bend a TMA wire, it tries to come back to its original position because of its resiliency. So, keep that thing in mind and always try to over bend it. Then it comes back to 90 degree. So, when after the visual examination, you can see that your bend is correct, then check it on the graph. Yeah, it's sitting there quite nicely. So, we'll start the lower arm of the loop. Mark the position correctly. So your mark decides from where you have to start the bend. Hold the wire tightly with your bird beak plier or the light wire plier and you can give bend with your thumb and try to maintain the plane whenever you are giving a bend because it becomes very difficult to correct the plane or it takes time. Also, it can incorporate some torque in the wire, which you may not be able to notice. So, when you think both arms are parallel, by visual examination, if you pass the wire bending, then check it on the graph. Seat it. The part we have to bend is straight. So, we will start with the fabrication of the loop. Mark the position from where the loop is starting. We will hold will hold the plier just behind this loop so that our curvature or the arc starts at the exact position. So we have to give a bend to the loop. So we are holding it slightly ahead of its mark and turning it to give a U loop. Again, try to maintain the plane of the wire and bend it. So this part of the T loop is quite easy as there is no hindrance on the remaining part of the wire for the movement. So when it comes to the second part of the loop, second loop of this T loop, because the free end of the wire goes below or above the wire. So that makes things quite difficult. So it, while making the first arc of the first U loop, just compress it, over bend it and then straighten it. It will come back at perfect 90 degree. Check it on the graph and then we will start the fabrication of the second part which is a little difficult as compared to the first part. So it may look like this is not sitting on the graph but actually uh, because of the camera angulation it, it's quite possible that uh, it's not coming on the graph but we will show you later on. For the second part of the loop, again I am holding the wire just behind the mark so our loop starts right at 10 millimeter width. If possible, try to finish the loop in one segment or but the problem happens when we finish the loop in one go that we are not able to change the thickness of the loop. If the loop becomes wider then it's difficult to correct it. So I recommend try to make a loop in segments first 45 degree 45 degree 45 degree turn approximately so it makes your loop round and symmetrical so you get an opportunity also to correct the loop if you try to open the loop and then compress it again then you may lose the symmetry when we bend the free the free end of the wire definitely it goes inside above or below the first part of the loop so 
This makes the making the vertical arm difficult. Check in on the graph. It's symmetric. So mark the position of the vertical arm. So in the T loop, uh, which is given in many books of the biomechanics also like Nanda, they make vertical arms at the level of 4 and 5 millimeter. So it basically depends upon the position of the auxiliary slot. If you want to put the uh, loop, the beta arm in the auxiliary slot, you can make it at 4 as compared to the other arm which is at 5. So 1 millimeter is highest of the main slot to the auxiliary slot. So I am making it 5 and keeping the distance between the loops as symmetrical as possible which is 2 millimeter. Just check the loop visually if there is any deformation you have to correct it before checking on the graph or glass plate. If it looks symmetric then check it on the graph paper. Yeah, it's, it's good. So after this is the beta band which is we will be giving. So I am giving this band at the 5 millimeter. So make your own technique of marking and giving a band. So I usually mark and hold the plier just behind the dot. So hold it firmly and give it a 90 degree turn. This will finish your T loop. In the second part of the video, we will understand about the alpha and beta bands. If you want to know the biomechanics also, then you can leave a message and uh, I'll separately make a lecture or video for this. So we have given a beta band also and uh, its activation will study later. So check it on the graph and it will be symmetric. Yeah, you can see. From the camera angulation, it seems like it's not symmetric, but yeah, it's very well symmetric. And you know, if we give the activation band, then this will be quite distorted again. So if there is minus discrepancy, then need not to worry. So better than bands.